Have you found the perfect running shoes that you never want to part with? Are you guilty of wearing your trainers until they're literally falling off your feet? If you are, then you're greatly at risk of injury. Knowing when to part from your trainers is difficult. There's so many numbers out there and different opinions. Well, in this video, we're going to show you the signs and what to look out for when you do need to part with those very worn, much loved shoes. Now, it might sound obvious, but your trainers won't last forever. Now, I have heard the odd horror story when a friend proudly announces that they've been wearing the same trainers for three years and they've not had an injury. But I warn you, this is an exception to the rule. We wear trainers to protect our feet from the surfaces that we run on, as well as to keep optimum function of our muscles and our joints. Now, as trainers wear, their form, their grip and support all diminish at different rates, but some of them are more visible than others. With wear, your running shoes will become thinner and the midsole layer of cushioning will decrease. Now, our bodies are great at adapting, so your hips, knees and ankles will compensate for this, but eventually, when the midsole becomes so thin, it will lead to injury and the key is changing your shoes before you get to this stage. When to change your shoes is such a grey area. There are so many different suggestions out there and the miles and time that you can run in your shoes before you need to throw them in the bin varies so much from person to person. Now this is a really rough guide, but people say somewhere between three to 500 miles or 450 to 600 kilometers. And when it comes to the time frame, that's even more vague, but somewhere maybe between 12 to 18 months. These numbers are such rough guides as your weight, your running style, the surface you run on, the type of running and so on are all affecting factors. Whether your shoes have air, gel or springs in makes a little difference as it's actually the foam midsole layer that most shoes will have made of EVA or ethyl vinyl acetate that wears at a similar rate, meaning there's no significant difference between brands. Now EVA is extremely elastic, similar to rubber, but a little bit tougher. That said, it does still wear out. Running shoes are made up of three different parts, all of which need to be taken into consideration when you're looking at the wear of your shoe. So we'll start with the upper, which consists of the mesh, the laces, the eyelets, and the heel counter. Now, obviously you want to be able to tighten your laces correctly, so if you're missing any eyelets, that's not good if you're not getting the full support. Also keep an eye on the stitching, because if your trainers get wet regularly, that can start to go. Now, when it comes to the mesh, you might be surprised to know that having a hole sort of on the top or somewhere that's not affecting the support or the comfort of the shoe isn't necessarily a problem. So my shoes often used to go on the toe because my big toe would extend, but as long as I was still getting full support, that didn't matter. However, if you do start to notice a hole where the upper joins the midsole, so anywhere along this line on either side, then that's a sign it's time to change your shoes. The final and most common wear on the upper is actually at the back of the shoe, the heel counter in here. Now inside of this, there's a plastic cup that's designed to help prevent overpronation, so as your foot lands to prevent it rolling inwards too much. And it's also there just to cup your heel and hold your foot firmly in the shoe, connecting it to the midsole. Now, if you can actually see this bit of plastic inside of here already, and you've not thrown your shoes away due to blisters or pain, please do so right now. The midsole is the hardest part to notice, but often the first to go, and it's also critical when it comes to wear, as it's designed to cushion the foot and act as a shock absorber. Therefore, it's essential to look closely for signs of wrinkles or discoloration. Now, like I said earlier, the midsole is usually made of EVA and it's often white in color. So if you can start to see a discoloration going a yellowy brown type color, and I don't just mean dirt, then it's a sign that the shock absorbing properties are going to be compromised. And the same goes if you see the development of fine horizontal lines. It's a common misconception to think that you only need to look at the sole of your shoe to work out the wear. Now, you'll gather by now that that isn't true, but there's still value in checking it. Now, the sole of your shoe will usually have black rubber that's designed to protect the softer EVA midsole, as well as providing some grip. You can easily detect your wear pattern just by looking. For example, Mark's shoes have got signs of wear, but nothing actually too dramatic. If, however, you can start to see the midsole coming through, then your shoes are definitely dead. And also, if you do require decent grip for the type of running you're doing, keep an eye on that. It's time.
time to physically test your shoe to back up the visual signs of wear that you've already found. Now this first simple test is for the midsole. Basically, we're going to look at the midfoot and the heel as that's the areas that take the most amount of impact and therefore the cushioning is most likely to go there first. So it's very simple. You're going to squeeze through the midfoot and then the heel and you should feel a slight amount of give and then a bit of a pushback as you let go. Now if it feels dead or there's no return there at all, the cushioning is gone, so throw your shoes out. If you're not quite sure how it should feel, then try and get hold of a new pair of shoes and give them a feel for comparison. Step two, fold the midsole, so push the toe towards the heel. And this shouldn't be easy to do. If, however, your shoe just folds in half, it's a good sign that the midsole is worn out. Next is the twist test. Now, motion control is vital in trainers as it controls your foot as it hits the ground. Therefore, you shouldn't be able to twist your shoe. So this test, you're simply going to try and move the toe or the front of the shoe in a different direction to the heel like this and it shouldn't move easily. If, however, your trainer just rings out no problem at all, it's a good sign the midsole's worn out. Now, with all of these tests, just remember to check both shoes and compare them as one can wear out more quickly than the other. And if you're still not sure, then go into your local sports shop and try and find a similar shoe, do the same tests and then compare. Finally, lightly draw a line or use some tape to go directly down the middle of the heel counter. So do this holding it so that you're not distracted by the angle already. And then once you've done that on both shoes, place them on a table or a flat surface in front of you and have a look to see if the line is perpendicular. Now I've used Mark's trainers here and he's done about 500 kilometers he reckons in them, but it looks like he has still got a very nice perpendicular line. If however, the line is off to one side or the other, then it's a sure sign that the midsole is more compressed on one side than the other. And that will then exacerbate any gait issues you might have and will lead to injury. In summary, you need to check the wear of your shoes regularly. So get into the habit of trying to do this about once a month as a guide. Now, the basic test you need to remember is the compression, the fold and the twist, as this will give you a good idea of the state of the shock absorbing and support properties. I know trainers aren't cheap, but replacing them regularly will actually save you in the long term. So throw out or recycle any old ones before you get injured, as it will save you from time missed training and money potentially spent on physiotherapy. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to GTN by clicking on the globe. And whilst we're talking about repair and things wearing out, if you've got a hole in your wetsuit and you want some tips on how to repair that, then there's a video for you just here. And if you're looking to run a fast half marathon, then we've got a great video for you right here.